Hi guys, welcome back to Snark and Spark. This is my channel. I'm Emily and today I'm going to talk about cross-stitch events that are going on in Daily 30 and also in Magical Stitches and life stuff, stitchy progress that I've made, um, my TBR, and whatever else I feel like. So yeah, just hang out with me for a bit. I just sneeze. <laughs> but welcome back. So first things first, let's talk about um, what's going on in different groups and then we'll move on to what I did last week stitching wise and then I want to talk about the books I want to read this month. So slash books that I have read this month, whatever. Well, you know what I want. Here we go. So first things first, I'm going to start with daily 30. Um, it is currently a closed group, so I'm really sorry. I know some of you had asked in my comments previously about what it is and how they can get to it and how you hear about it. Um, as far as I know right now, it is a closed group. We are not taking new members. I am really sorry about that, but if it does change, I will let you know. Just hang in there. Um, the Daily 30 events last for two weeks, but they are released every Friday. So I'm going to cover the most current two. Um, so we've got... Um, the one that ended August and it goes until next week because it's two weeks. So it started on Friday, July 30th. It covered last week and it will go until this Friday. It ends this Friday the 13th. And that was Coral Reef Week, um, which, because um, Reef Awareness Week was the week of July 25th through August 1st. I did not know that, but that's that's when it was, which is really cool. Um, coral reefs make up less than 1% of the oceans, but provide homes to 25% of the world's marine life. Stitch on a whip that is less than 25% of the stitches already completed. Gosh, that would probably be almost all of my whips because there's no way, except for um, the periodic table because it's almost done. That's probably like 75%, but I would definitely say like my read now and like Mary, or like the holiday truck ornaments, probably. Um, two, clear and shallow water is best for the reefs to thrive. Stitch on a whip with something that is usually, with something that is usually clear in it. Ice, water, windows, glass, things like that. Um, cups that are made of glass, glasses, um, sunglasses, yeah, raindrops, that's all I got right now off the top of my head. Um, three established coral reefs today are between 5,000 to 10,000 years old, although some individual corals may only live a couple of years. Stitch on a whip where the chart is more than two years old, pre-2019, but that you only started within the last two years. So. The chart has a copyright of 2016, but you started it in November of 2020. I honestly don't know. I'd have to look. I'm not sure if I have anything that fits that, or at least not one that I've started. Four, coral are, in fact, animals, not plants. Just in a whip with an unusual animal. That's really open because what you find unusual, someone else might not find. Like I stitched on a crocodile. To some, that's an unusual animal. For me, it's not because I love crocodiles. Um, but not everyone does. <laughs> so that's okay. Uh, da -da -da. Five, coral reefs fringe many tropical coastlines, creating a barrier providing an important first line of defense against powerful tropical storms and weather systems absorbing the brunt of the ocean's energy. Stitch on a whip with something that is a barrier. Uh, physical walls, doors, houses, um, I would argue that a border around your project is a barrier. Things like that. Uh, and then there was the 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Now, I encourage you, even if you can't be in the group, um, there's no reason why, just for the fun of it, that you can't just stitch.
stitch along because you want to or because you want to have fun or you want to just join in and stitch with us. There's nothing that says you can't do that. In fact, I would love it if even if you're not in like Daily 30 with me and with some of the other floss tubers, if you still just joined in, tell us about your progress down below in our comments, you know, just do it anyway. Do it for fun. Don't let that the group is closed be a barrier or be a hindrance to stitching. Just join us anyways. You can always stitch for 30 minutes a day. You don't have to take a picture of it. You can just do it and love it. And I'm so happy about that. So that, that ends this Friday. The other one that she launched last Friday, so it started on Friday the 6th and it will go until August 20th, is Dinosaur Week. And I immediately think of Harriet <laughs> and her dinosaurs. <laughs> So dinosaurs are a group of reptile-like creatures that dominated the land for over 140 million years, more than 160 million years in some parts of the world. That's a lot. They evolved diverse shapes and sizes from the fearsome giant Spinosaurus to the chicken-sized Microraptor, and we were able to survive, and were able to survive, we were not, and were able to survive in a variety of ecosystems. So we've got two weeks. Looks like all of these are... 100 stitches or 200 stitches or an hour or two hours. That's what she recommends you, how long you work on them. So same thing. If you can't be in these groups, but you want to do the challenges, just write them down as I'm going over it. Look at your whip and either time yourself. I like the time option. If you're someone like me where I'm in a lot of different challenge groups and sometimes my stitch counts are all over the place or I'm really trying to keep track of specific stitch counts for specific things, um, using the time for this group is really nice because, you know, I can be like, well, I did work on it for an hour and mark it and not worry about trying to do stitch counts for this. My, my forehead is itchy. It looks like I have a headache. I don't. My forehead is just really itchy. <laughs> I don't know. It's hot. <laughs> we'll get into that. Okay. So. Da -da 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 -da. Number one, despite their similarities, dinosaurs are not reptiles, but they did lay eggs. So stitch on a whip with something that can lay eggs. Birds, fish, insects, spiders, platypus, platypi. I don't know how certain creatures are born. Crocodiles, <laughs> reptiles, um, there's that. <laughs> Two, dinosaurs lived in the Mesozoic era, which scientists have divided into three periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So probably heard those terms before. This really makes me wanna watch Jurassic Park. I have a feeling I'm probably gonna do that. This makes me wanna go watch all the Jurassic Park movies because it's Jurassic. That's a really good idea. I'm going to write that down and see if my husband would want to watch some of the Jurassic Park movies with me while I stitch. Okay. Anyways, during this era, the land gradually split from one huge continent into the smaller ones. That, you know, we know the associated changes in the climate and vegetation affected how dinosaurs evolved. Stitch on a whip that is part of a series or style that has three or more parts. Perfect. Um, same thing. I can give you examples of things that were series or styles, but I only have one that I am currently working on, and that is my Letters from Hogwarts piece. It was released um, in sections. It was released in chapters. So there are six chapters plus the introductions. That's seven parts. And that was a stitch along. Um, you know, there are plenty of other stitch along caterpillar. Cross Stitch does a lot. Most of their things were stitch along, are originally released as stitch alongs and they're released in multiple parts. Um, tiny modernist stuff. Uh, what else am I? The, if you are in the Dogs of Disney stitch, summer stitch along, um, which I highly recommend. It is almost over. Um, what is her name? Abby is the creator. She designed a cross-stitch C 
series piece called The Dogs of Disney, and she has released two a week for the last several weeks during the summer months. And we have everything from Stitch to, you know, Pongo and Perdita from 101 Dalmatians. The last one will come out this week, and it's hard to believe, um, but they are so stinking adorable. Um, and because the feedback has been so great, she will also be doing a Cats of Disney that she will make available for purchase um, as it is ready. And I believe she will be continuing this series, but I can't say for certain. She has hinted that we could potentially see a Sidekicks of Disney, which makes my happy. I'm also in like a Disney kick right now. So... I'm not a movie person, so the fact that I'm like, ooh, I want to go watch Tarzan, and I want to watch Jurassic Park is very odd to me, because it's just not normally how I am. I am a reader, <laughs> as you'll be able to see by, this is, can you, mm, okay, this is how tall, it's as tall as my water bottle. This is my water bottle. The stack of books next to me is as tall as my water bottle. That's how many books I want to read. <laughs> we'll get there. I'm jumping all over the place. Sorry. Um, what else, though? Uh, series. I'm thinking any, like, holidays of the year, dates of the year. Um, I can see it because I have them. I have, like, the months of the year in two forms. I have one that are little, it's like, squareology. They're little squares of the month. And then I've got, like, the chalkboard months of the year. What is that called? A year in chalk. Goodness. <laughs> Number three. The lush vegetation and plentiful supply of plants of the Jurassic period allowed plant-eating sauropods, such as the Brachiosaurus, to be dominant. Stitch on a whip, plants or trees. Pretty easy peasy there. Um, that's anything that's going to grow out of the ground. Grass, flowers, bushes, trees, shrubs. Cacti. Edges. <laughs> Why am I like this? Vegetables, fruit. <laughs> Four, the term dinosauria was first used in 1842. Prior to that, there was no collective name for the terrible lizard. <laughs> Stitch on a whip that you call by a different name to the chart title. I mean, that's, that's individual for everyone. Um, some of us refer to things by its name all the time, because that's what it is. Others of us don't. Like, I know, I like, my letters from Hogwarts, I call letters from Hogwarts, because that's, for me, that's what it is. Um, I don't really call my holiday truck ornaments anything. I think I usually, like, the whole set of four is called holiday truck ornaments. The one I am specifically working on right now is Mary. Well, it says Mary, but it doesn't actually call it that in the pattern. So maybe I would, just, I guess that's an example. Like, I refer to it as Mary. Um, my Read Now piece, I can never remember that that's what it's called. I end up calling it, like, old-timey books because <laughs> that's the only way I can remember which one I'm talking about. That one probably fits more as old-timey books. Five. There are over 700 known species of extinct dinosaurs with fossils having been found on all seven continents. Stitch on a whip with fabric or floss that was a limited edition or solo die or chart that is out of print. Ooh. With fabric or floss. Oh! Harry Potter. Um, players from Hogwarts. Uh, the guy who, cunning, cunning cross stitch. I've got a huge piece of a huge piece of fabric. This is why it was all like bundled and clipped. Um, so Cutting Cross Stitch designed the letters from Hogwarts um, Sal and he paired with um, Mystic Fabrics to come up with a custom fabric for his Sal and I ordered it. Um, because it's such a weird size like he has such a big it's such a big size chart um, it is a weird cut that like most fabric people they don't really sell in that size so like it's like it's an off cut size it was a special die that she only did for this project i don't think you can get it anymore um so yeah that would work 
And then, of course, the non-counting where you just stitch 30 minutes a day, every day. Do it. It's like your daily dose of therapy. Sorry, my phone has sound, apparently. All right, that covers, this is going to take forever. I did not mean, for, I cannot, I need to stay on topic. I'm so sorry, guys. All right. <clears throat> Now let's go to magical stitches. That way, if you're just here to listen through to homework and get ideas about homework, I can send you on your merry way and you don't have to listen to me ramble, but obviously stick around, hang out, listen to me ramble and talk and stitch while I talk about all the other stuff. Why not? So we are on um, series two, book one, task two, and it's called Olympus Campers. I'm like not in my mode of, I haven't done this in a few months. I'm so sorry. Campers! So our new guests are struggling with being demigods. Um, they just don't understand what is going on. And so we have been trying to tell them all about Mount Olympus. However, they aren't buying what we're telling them. So our task this week is going to be all about Olympus. As usual, if you don't have a whip that fits, then you must work on your oldest whip for the same amount of stitches. Start and stop photos for each are needed. Okay, we have one task that is broken into seven parts. And um, yeah, we're gonna be showing off the beauties of Olympus. You may use as many whips as you would like for this task and the object only needs to be in your whip. We are using the word Olympus and you're going to find objects in your whip that start with each letter in the word Olympus. Each letter is 150 stitches. So I just threw a lot at you. Let's break it down. So all of the new campers, welcome. Hi, welcome to Magical Stitches. Welcome to the Percy Jackson year. This is crazy. Um, this is my third year in the group, which is also crazy to think about. But uh, yeah, I am the head camper for Team Demigods. So if you are new, you've been sorted onto a team. Um, we have Team Gods, Team Titans, and Team Demigods. And I am the head camper for Team Demigods, which means think of me as like your team leader. It's really not that official, but like look to me for questions and advice and things like that. I will try and help you out as best as I can. Either find me on the group or um, ask to join our group chat or comment down below and I will get to you as soon as I can. Um, each of the teams has like a team leader and I am, I am yours. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so now y'all are new. This is a task that we get, I don't want to say pretty regularly, but I'd say definitely once every couple months we get a spell it out challenge. So, um, Camp director Vicky will give us a word or words, and we have to find objects in our whips that start with those letters. So this week we are spelling out Olympus. So you can look at any of your whips, and you just have to find a word that starts with the letters. So we're going to break it down. She gave an example, and I'm also going to give more examples. The example Vicky gave is this. O for ocean, L for lawn, Y for yacht, M for mouse, P for pickle, U for umbrella, S for sunset. Those are just example words. Those are not the words you have to find. Those are examples. So you want to look through all that you're, you have that are available to you. In my case, four. I have finally limited myself to having only four active whips. Actually, four whips, period, because I've found that that rotation works for me. That is a really good number for me to have because that I touch all of them at least once. Anyways, so looking, so like let's get some more examples for things. O's, <laughs> ocelots, oranges, the fruit, um, orchids, <laughs> orangutans, ovals, organs, pianos and inside. So there's lots of things. Don't limit yourself. Be creative. Um, L, lawn, love, lard, 
lion, leaves, like leaves, leopard, lakes, a lute, which is a musical instrument, L lily, so lots of things. <laughs> Why? Yak. The animal, a yak, yogurt, yo-yo, yawn, um, a, uh, a yam. God, I couldn't think of what it's called. I kept wanting to say a yuckatash, thinking suckatash, and that's not right. Uh, y y your, y is that usually yodel? That's not right. Yodel a <laughs> Yodel, not yogel. Jeez, what is wrong with me? Yoga. <laughs> a yoga mat. A yoga ball. Yoga pants. <laughs> a yard. Mat. M. Mouse. Man. Min. Money. Mirror. Moana, Merida, M Moose, Meat, Mouth. Oh, another good one for O would be opening. Um, there are openings at the, you have openings on your face. We have, you know, eyes, ears, mouth, those are openings. Um, there are openings to most bottles and containers. Uh, P, persimmon, pirate, porcupine, popsicle, panda, potatoes, person, paws, puppy, pencil, pen, pen, pine, pie, polka dot, polka spot, whatever. U for umbrella, you can do a ukulele, um, uranium, <laughs> uh, you're a unicorn, a unicycle, an umpire. Underwear. <laughs> uh, just da -da -da. And then S, C, soap, salt, sucker, snake, suck attach, squash, um, steps, sky, street, stars. There's so much. The thing is, I could continue on. I'm not going to. That's the idea. The thing you need to keep in mind though, the object has to be in your whip. You don't have to actually stitch on that particular object. If you are, cool, but you don't have to. Each letter is 150 um, stitches. She's asking for start and stop photos after each one. Um, the other thing to keep in mind though, is that you can't use descriptive words as your letter. Um, I got asked this and I said I would talk about it. You can't say a yellow flower. That's just a flower. If you knew the name, like is it a marigold? Is it a daisy? Things like that. That counts because it's specific. Which is why when I said, oh, an orange, that counts because it is the fruit. But I couldn't say an orange door. That won't count. It has to be the object that we're talking about. Um, so you know, no urgent whatever. No positive people, <laughs> um, you have to use specific items. Um, I also got asked, you can repeat or you can use the same item in different ways. Again, it's just you have to have um, different stitches for it. Sometimes we can't repeat. This one's not a big deal because we don't have any repeating letters. And at different events, we've had repeating letters. Sometimes it's okay to repeat if you can't come up with something else. You just have to have a different set of stitches for it. You can't use the same. Each 
each letter gets its own set. So there's that. I'm going to leave that there. That was our stitching stuff going on. I just kind of wandered around haphazardly with that. Um, but I want to show you what I accomplished last week now because having just the four whips now, I was able, I actually touched all of them. Yes, at some point in this first like few, this um, like first week and some days of August, which is really cool. Um, bingo in Semi Sane is really helping me do that, which I really like, and they're manageable now. So let's just go over whatever what I what I've done. So starting in order that I've got them numbered. in my project bag. is the holiday truck ornament. Um, I am currently doing this one, which is why I say I'm, I have Mary. Um, I'm looking at it to see if there is something that I could go ahead and like distinctly see that stands out to me for certain letters. Um, we'll figure it out. Like I don't have an O in this one, but I'm like so these are these are supposed to be Christmas lights so um, the little French knots I would say lights um, Look for a Y. I don't know if I have a Y for this. Um, presents. Snowman. Snow on top of it, skis. Those letters are easy. Oh, which reminds me, you also can't just use, you can't just say it's a letter. So um, I can't go M just because there is an M in it. No, you have to have an object. I also couldn't do L just because there's an L over here. Um, it has to be, um, and I was ignoring these ones since I'm not actively working on these, so I'm only working on this one right now. So that is that, and this is where I'm at on it. Ta -da! It's really cute. Um, I feel like I'm insane for doing this, but it's really cute. I'm really enjoying it, actually. Um, I just hope that they turn out as orna really cute ornaments for my coworkers. Um, I'm a little nervous about the back, just a little bit. I've, I've tried to keep it really, really neat. I've been tying knots, which is what it actually says to do in the um, instructions, in the pattern, to tie knots on the back of this since it is plastic canvas. But I'm really already toying with thinking about how to potentially um, like back these on felt just to protect it even more. Um, I'm really considering doing that just because I don't want these to come undone like the first year I make them, you know. 
So that's where I'm at with that one. It's fun. It's really not that hard. I thought it would be harder. I think it was just all in my head. But it, it's pretty quick to stitch. This is my project bag for it. I love this project bag. So it's got these two big pockets here, which is where I currently have the actual the, the canvas and the pattern and my all the stuff I like paper stuff I need for it. But then also it zips in the middle and then it undoes itself. And it has pockets. Like this is a big zipper pocket. So I've got my like my Paco store flush holder over here. That's my clicker, my tally counter. That's all the floss for the kit that came on the thing. Oh, this pocket's unzipped. But like this is a little pocket. It's got my scissors in it. This is a thing where I stick my needle when I take it out. So I usually don't keep it attached to canvas because, you know, canvas. <laughs> Not like sticking it in fabric. Where did I get this? Um, I want to say Hobby Lobby, but I'm not sure. I don't usually go to Hobby Lobby. What else? Then, letters from Hogwarts. I pulled this beautiful boy out again. I changed how I had it. I had it on a much smaller frame, but then I changed it because I wanted to see. This is the full width of the piece. And plus I have extra fabric. But I've got, I should probably turn this sound down. I am so sorry. Whoop, my cat. No, no. Washington, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, we'll see how much of that I keep in. But my cat just knocked my entire computer camera off of my desk. So, <laughs> sorry if I suddenly, like, shifted positions. Anyways. <laughs> This is the entire width of this piece, and I wanted to be able to see all of it because I wasn't, I just couldn't wrap my head around how big it was. This is how big it's going to be. The other border will stop here ish. So there's that, and then it will go down. I haven't fully done all the border down yet. But yeah, I wanted to be able to do all the way across the top, and then I'm just going to start working my way down. So that way, now, as I've, I've decided, as I move the Q-snap, I really just have to move it down. I didn't like the idea that I was going to have to keep moving it, like, down, 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 over, over, over. So I just was like, let me see all of it, and then I'll be able to just, I'll just do top to bottom. So that's this. I finished the smoke off the train. I finished the green swirl, and I have started working on the owl. There's more done on the owl than it looks like. You can kind of tell um, this is like 712 or whatever, and it's cream, and it really blends into this fabric. And so it doesn't stand out until I have more of the details done. But yeah. Ta da! Then my library periodic table, which is underneath all of this crap stuff, whatever. It's come along. I pretty much have, I have a box done. <laughs> I got the rest of the AR box done. I'm now going back. Now I'm going around and doing the border and I will come back and I will come around and do the rest of that and then I will move on. Which is going to be like a blue color. I will use this for my Y because um, it's it spells, it's going to spell library, and it stands for the element, like, that starts with Y, which is what? Yttrium? Yttrium? However you say that. That'll be my Y. So then I'll pull this stitch, this out. This is also now my oldest whip, and I, I just want to be done with it at this point. This, this has lost all of its appeal for me. It really is now just like a labor of love. I just need to get it done, and I can't justify not finishing it because all that's left is one last block. Plus, I really do want to run it through the laminator, and I can't just run an almost done piece. Like, I can't. I have to. And I will. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then I will more than likely, honestly, I'll probably give it away. I uh, will give it away. I will give it to 
a coworker. I might give it to our current library director because she's retiring this year. But I have, yeah, I will do something else with it. And that's okay. And last but not least, read now, or as I say, old timey books. <laughs> did I add on to this? I feel like I only added a hundred stitches to this. Yeah. This one got skipped. This one's been skipped quite a bit and I didn't use it for any of the bingo like wilds or draw twos because I was focusing on uh, letters from Hogwarts and Mary. But so this one only got a hundred stitches but still a hundred stitches is still a hundred stitches. And now you can see that it's, it's going to say book not just boo. <laughs> So there's that. Those are my four whips. Um, I plan on, from now on, doing like a weekly progress, like update um, each week since I'm only working on those four and I'm hoping throughout this month especially I'll keep touching on all of them. Um, that's, that's the goal. So I will keep you guys updated as I go about each week. That's what I did. Um, what else? Oh, TBR. So finally, I want to talk about what I'm wanting to read this month. And yeah, just like things to look forward to. So without uh, creating a huge, huge mess, unlike the one I already have on my desk. Move my microphone. <laughs> I love books. So let's go over what I've got. <laughs> I'm actually starting at the bottom because this is the one that I'm currently reading. This is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. I have no good way of describing this book other than convoluted and messed up. It's like a story within a story within a story and... 20-something-year-old Johnny finds out his neighbor, old man neighbor, has died. Goes through old man neighbor's belongings and finds this manuscript that this old man neighbor was drawn, was writing. The manuscript is all about a film that supposedly exists but doesn't actually exist about a family that lives in a house that is, like, constantly changing its dimensions and, like, trying to eat them alive. And it's messed up. So you're reading this old man's, it reads like a nonfiction, it's like this old man's manuscript on this film house that's not real, but he wrote it as if it was nonfiction, and then you've got this 20-something kid who found the manuscript after that dude's dead, who's writing like in the margins, his like footnotes. And, like, his obscure thoughts as he's reading this dude's manuscript about this house. And it's, like, slowly driving him insane. Where it's, like, everyone just has gone insane over this house. I'm only, like, I'm just now, like, halfway through. And it's, I really want to say it's a mind, F-U-C-K. <laughs> I am not at that point where I will comfortably use that word on my channel. <laughs> so there's that. Next. This is a young adult novel. This is A Peculiar Peril by Jess Vandermeer. It is supposedly going to be the first in like a trilogy. Um, I haven't started it. I have no idea what to say other than it, it looks great. It, um, The back says, warning, this book is not normal, and that's, like, that's what did it for me. 
don't know anything about it. I have the next book in Philippa Gregory's like Tudor series, because you know I've been listening to those, like the Plantagenets and the Tudor series. This is The King's Curse. I don't remember which book number this is. This is honestly like number six or number seven. Hang on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six. This is seven. So, um, I listened to all the other ones as audiobooks. I could not find this one as an audiobook, which is weird. Also, I can't do audiobooks this month, so that's okay. But I really want to read this so I can get back into listening to. I love these books. This is like the other Boleyn girl. This is like all leading up to that. I finally have gotten to Henry and his multiple wives. That's where this is heading. So I'm excited for it. This was my grab and go that I mentioned it last time. It's called Dr. Knox by Peter Spiegelman. Um, new thriller about a medical doctor with a powerful humanitarian impulse and unhealthy appetite for risk and a knack for finding himself between a rock and a hard place. So, yeah. This was my grab and go. And it's a mystery, so it will count. I'll let you know. Then we've got, I have a comic book series, a graphic novel series called Ghosted in LA. I have, it's a trilogy. I have volumes one, two, and three. Uh, I saw these because I processed them at my job because I work at a library. So we got them in at my location where I work. I kind of flipped through and was like, oh, this sounds really cool saw that they, we had all of them and they were a trilogy, and so I put them on hold and I've gotten them. I have a nonfiction book called Effortless by Grant McCallan, Make It Easier to Do What Matters Most. Um, the funny thing was, I was actually recommended his other book, which up here is um, Essentialism, which I, <laughs> for whatever reason, this does not say Essentialism. But I got them confused, and so I put this one on hold, realized it was not the book, and then went, eh, I'll read it anyway. I think it was published this year, and I need a 2021 publication date. Why not? I also think this would be something that um, my husband and I would like to read together. I also just kind of liked that it's, um, this is an empowering guide to achieving your goals. It all starts with a simple principle. Not everything has to be so hard. And I am really interested in that because I feel like I'm really hard on myself and I don't need to be. Then I've got a book of poetry called um, Where Hope Comes From by Nikita Gill. Again, I processed this book and I um, kind of flipped through it and it's poems of resilience, healing, and light. And with my dad's, um, the anniversary of my dad's death coming up, this just screamed out to me and so I checked it out and I will be reading that very soon. And last but not least, continuing on in my Stephen King bibliography. Oh, and let me, sorry, I can explain what these are. Um, whenever you put a book on hold at my library, they print out a slip that has like a really light adhesive on it. And they tape it on the cover some of my information. Um, it's just a slip. Oh, if I hold it back here, you can't see. It's just a slip, but it's got like my initials on it, when I need to pick it up by, and they put it on this part of the book that way, and then they shelve it like this. So when you're looking at it, um, it's actually really nice. It's a way of like, um, observing our privacy for our members and our patrons, not members, but our patrons. So that way, when you're looking for your hold, you just have to look for your name. You don't have to look for the title of the book, but also all of the spines are turned in. So no one is looking at what you put on hold. So you don't have to feel embarrassed. Just a nice 
which you should never be embarrassed for anything that you want to read, but it's just a nice way of like respecting that maybe you don't want someone to know that you checked out Neurotica or that you're secretly obsessed with Stephen King or that you're getting children's books, not because, because even though your kid reads them, but like you want to read them. But yes, so that's what all those were. I put them on hold and so they've got their pickup slips on them because I haven't actually like opened them yet. But uh, Stephen King bibliography, this was one of his Bachman books and this is Roadwork. Yes, but I haven't. Um, I also have, I finished already, I've already read two books this month. I have read 55 sinister short, slightly sinister stories. They were 55 short stories that were all 55 words long. It was a really fun, quick read. Um, and then I read Stephen King's The Cycle of the Werewolf, which was also really short. They were both only like 120 something pages, super short, but both very good. I think that's all I've got. I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, for chatting with me, for listening and stitching along with me. Um, join me again sometime, <laughs> but I will see you guys soon. Um, in the meantime, happy stitching, happy reading, happy watching, happy listening, happy doing whatever it is that makes you happy doing. I will talk to you guys soon. Be easy with your heart.